But I run a program called Think Like a Tree, which is based on my um, experiences with permaculture. So I started off with land-based, did a um, PDC and diploma, and then have used the principles from nature, permaculture principles and other observations from being around trees and nature um, to design a program which is all about um, health, well-being and also living a good life. So um, trying to be a good ancestor, uh, uh, which is what um, trees are very, very good at. Um, and I wanted to share this particular uh, uh photo creatively responding to change um as obviously a coppice um tree which is has re-sprouted and it looks terribly brutal doesn't it um and what we find with uh coppice trees is they've developed this uh growth mechanism in response to being browsed by large herbivores and they actually grow uh, stronger and are longer lived because of this ability to um, to rebound. And I think this is something that um, what what we do with Think Like a Tree, and I do very very much in my own life because this is coming all coming from my own experiences, is actually draw uh, knowledge and learning um, from uh, trees in particular and other natural systems and this very much mirrors the concept of um, post-traumatic growth that we see in humans when when with research that there's this idea of post post-traumatic post growth um, and I think there's nothing better to illustrate that than than a coppice tree. Um, this cactus is incredible the um the natural principle from um from think like a tree and, and which is also um one of the principles in my book is know that life is a struggle and one of the things that i've been learning about recently is something called grit and it is a really uh, has been shown to be a really strong factor in in resilience and that's this cactus has um for 14 million seeds um, and only one of which will grow into a, um, an, an adult full grown plant. So that is, I think, a massive definition of grit. But I see that a lot in permaculture in people that I meet in that there is this um, this kind of desire to keep moving forwards. And I, I think that's because we have such a strong sense of purpose, and not simply because we know what the problems and the issues are in the world, but because we also can see that there are solutions. And we can see that there are solutions sort of in two ways. One, because it, permaculture is all about mimicking nature. Um, and we can see that it works for nature, 3.8 billion years of this amazing abundance around us. It is you know you need no better success story really but we've also got this fantastic success story of all the projects around the world and and in in the uk as well that we can build on so it's such a sort source of strength for us um kind of as as we cope with any um, problems that arise and of course one of the big factors in, in resilience is to have a support network and we know that you know the support networks and the projects and the association and everybody is um, within the permaculture community there are those support networks in lots and lots of different ways um, so one of the things that Ryan asked me to talk about was the um, the new online courses from the Permaculture Association. And, and um, these were already uh, in the pipeline um, before COVID. But I think that with moving things online, it's a really, it's created a lot of opportunities that people can access permaculture in different ways. Um, there are different courses which you can go and, and have a look at them but there's a designing for resilience course and this is a brilliant idea that you've got a taught course so you've got a tutor that works through the course with you but you've also got the option of a, of a course without a tutor that's just at your own pace so this is also creating opportunities for employment for, for tutors as well and then there's a second strand to the this idea of um the 
the Permaculture Association courses, with, which is the collaboration with other practitioners. So any um, permaculture teacher or somebody who is in a relevant discipline can put a proposal to the Permaculture Association to say that they would like their courses on the PA platform. And that's exactly what I'm doing at the moment. So there will be, I think, like a tree natural principles course coming on the platform. And this is a great example of collaboration because for that, the, the course provider um, get, gets the, the the platform included in the price and then pays a percentage to the Permaculture Association for um, hosting the course and promoting it as well. So there's real kind of economies of scale of promoting, getting together and promoting lots of courses, um, you, you know, together, because obviously that's, we can have all this amazing content, but it's actually getting it out there and getting people onto the courses that, that is the bottom line really to, to promoting this. Um, so the, with regard to courses, the, this year has been um, really interesting for Think Like a Tree because we had, the, this is our group of Think Like a Tree facilitators that we chained up last November. So Millie Carmichael on the, on the right of the picture there um, is my co-trainer of the facilitators and they were all heading out into the, around the country to um, lead their own courses. But of, of course, that um, didn't happen this year with COVID. But what we have done is switch to courses um, via Zoom. So that was really interesting. We, we kind of sat down and with the creatively response to change hat on and thought, which way can we go? So I just wanted to say a few challenges and a few benefits of doing that. So there was definitely a challenge of the technology. It was the group cohesion and communication that that was definitely harder i found it a lot harder facilitating over zoom and i think as a facilitator you kind of have to learn a different way of in, tr trying to get people to engage and overcome some some of those barriers but as the courses and workshops have gone on i think that we've we've definitely um, improved with that um, we've had to have a look at which, which courses were appropriate to do online and which ones really had to be done in person. So we've decided that the facilitator training has to be done in person in a group, um, but other courses can be done online. And then, of course, there's the concern about nature connection. So, you know, at the end of the day, we're, we're trying to get people to connect with nature, as with any permaculture course. How does that fit in terms of running courses? And what we've um, done with, with ours is to have a break in the middle, send people outside, um, if uh, you know, um, asking them at first if they do have access to some kind of outdoor space and then um, asking them to do a task. So there's some kind of nature connection and we also get people to bring um, bits of nature in to have next to their computer. Um, but there have been real benefits from that as well. So the ability to attract a new international audience that we'd not had had before. Um, we have asked people, I, I do say on the um, my website, please don't fly to any of my courses. So it's been brilliant to have people from Australia, America, Japan, um, lots of places um, coming on the courses. And there's an accessibility issue as well, because, um, you know, I, I live with a chronic illness and I know that there are quite a lot of courses that I haven't been able to access. And in the past, I've done courses that I haven't been able to complete because of health problems. Um, so I think we we mustn't underestimate the fact that, that that this really is increasing accessibility and therefore not to lose that when we go um, back um, to being able to hold courses in, in person and perhaps trying to have that balance. Um, and I think that to, just to kind of conclude, uh, you may have seen some people, uh, Katie Shepherd, for example, writing uh, about learning from people who have chronic illnesses and disabilities. Because we were off, we were 
confronting a lot of these challenges that everybody has had to confront during COVID. We've been confronting them for years in terms of, um, you know, how, how to um, access things when you can't leave your house. Um, so I, I think that that is, I really, really hope that learning from people who have got that wisdom continues um, after, you know, af after things return to be able to do a lot more in person.